So describing function approach is uh, utilized uh, to predict the existence of limit cycles uh, in uh, nonlinear systems. The approach is applicable to systems which can be described in this particular format. And uh, in the last lecture, we have learned that uh, if the system is not in this uh, particular format, we can bring uh, the system into this uh, format by using some rearrangements. So the basic idea of uh, this uh, describing function approach is to uh, first bring the system into this format, then uh, assume a periodic uh, solution uh, to this system, that is assume this x to be a sinusoidal input, uh, and then approximate this nonlinear function by a quasi linear function which we called describing function. It is different from transfer function because it depends upon the amplitude and the frequency of the input signal whereas uh, the uh, transfer functions which we learned earlier those do not depend upon the properties of the input. These uh, only depend upon the properties of the system whereas uh, this thing depends upon the properties of input. So, in the second step, uh, we approximate the nonlinearity with the, a describing function and then uh, we uh, check whether our assumed solution uh, that uh, satisfies this differential equation, the differential equation which describes this system, which is approximation of this uh, system. And uh, that is uh, we need to solve this equation uh, for uh, values of a and omega. So in uh, today's lecture and in next few lectures, we shall talk about these two points in more details. This is simple one that is we assume a periodic solution and then these two points need further elaboration. That is how to approximate nonlinearities by describing functions and then how to solve this equation. So we shall talk about these points in uh, a little bit more detail. So let us uh, start with this uh, uh, point describing function. Uh, you know that uh, for linear systems we have transfer function and uh, a linear system has these properties that is if you apply a sinusoidal input to a linear system the output of the system is also, also sinusoidal. That is the property of linear systems. That is uh, if you have this input x of t is equal to a sin omega t, then the output of linear system will, uh, this uh, system will only add some scaling to the amplitude of the input and it will add some phase shift to the input. Uh, otherwise, the output is also sinusoidal. What about nonlinear systems? For nonlinear systems, if you apply a sinusoidal input, the output is not necessarily a sinusoidal signal. Generally, it is not sinusoidal. However, it is very often a periodic signal. Not sinusoidal, but a periodic signal. If you apply this uh, sinusoid to a nonlinear system, the output is often periodic. Uh, and this output is always periodic if this nonlinearity is a single valued nonlinearity. What is single valued nonlinearity? Or can you give an example of a nonlinearity which is not a single valued nonlinearity? Hysteresis nonlinearity, for example, that is not a single valued nonlinearity. Uh, you remember the curve for a hysteresis curve? For a single value of input, there can be different values of the output of that nonlinearity. Uh, but many nonlinearities that we shall discuss in this course, uh, those are single valued nonlinearities. For example, saturation nonlinearity, dead zone nonlinearity, and uh, these nonlinearities are single valued nonlinearities. Is this point also clear? So this uh, signal W of t uh, for a sinusoidal input is not uh, in general a sinusoidal signal. However, it is often a periodic signal 
and this is always a periodic signal if this nonlinearity is a single valued nonlinearity. That is, uh, if you have uh, this input to this nonlinear system, the output to the system is a periodic signal. And what is period of that signal? This t period of the output signal is the same as the input for time invariant nonlinearities. This is only true for time invariant nonlinearities. And the nonlinearities which we shall discuss in this course, all of them will be will be time invariant nonlinearities. So how do we define describing function? We have just uh, talked about it uh, in the last lecture. Here is uh, the formal definition of describing function. Describing function is the ratio of the fundamental component of this uh, output signal W of t and the input signal. Uh, we remember this is uh, W of t is uh, a periodic signal uh, and uh, it can be uh, we can find the fundamental component of this periodic signal and this describing function is the ratio of the fundamental component of W of t and the input signal a sin omega t. Furthermore, uh, you remember uh, that any periodic signal uh, we can find a Fourier series expansion for that particular signal. Uh, that Fourier series expansion is written over here where is uh, a naught, a n and b n. These can be found by these expressions. A n is given by this relation w of t d omega t uh, we integrate it uh, over the period of that signal likewise a n and b n you remember all these relations uh, from your previous knowledge uh, you have uh, extensively studied Fourier series expansion of periodic signals so I think this is clear to all of you so what is fundamental component of w of t fundamental component uh, w1 is equal to a1 cosine omega t plus b1 sine omega t. Here we have uh, higher order components. If we substitute n equal to 1 into this expression, we get the fundamental component. And furthermore, for odd functions, a n uh, is always equal to 0. a n is always equal to 0. And what is uh, w1 of t in that case? This, uh, this term is 0, so b1 sin omega t. And hence, uh, for odd nonlinearities, describing function is given by this relation. The fundamental component of the, uh, this uh, w of t and divided by input sinusoid. So this fundamental component, uh, this is b1 sin omega t, this is a sin omega t, so this b1 divided by a1 that is the describing function for odd nonlinearities. Uh, we have denoted it, uh, this describing function it is a function of amplitude and frequency. However, what we observe is that if we have odd nonlinearities then this will be only function of the amplitude of the input. This is equal to b1 divided by a. b1 is some constant so it is not function of frequency for odd nonlinearities. For nonlinearities which are not odd nonlinearities, for th those cases, uh, this is not equal to zero, and we have a little bit more complex situation. That is, uh, for nonlinearities which are not odd, W1 of t that is uh, given by this uh, relation, this expression, and uh, you can uh, rewrite it into another form. Uh, this is the same as m sine omega t plus phi. What is m? This is uh, a1 square plus b1 square whole square root. m is uh, this thing and phi is equal to tangent inverse of b1 over a1. You can easily write uh, this thing into this particular format. That is quite clear for all of you. Hence uh, this function Describing function for nonlinearities which are not odd that is given by this relation. The fundamental component 
of WFT divided by input sinusoid.